In the evolving story of human spaceflight, certain moments mark a clear before and after. The first orbital booster landing by Blue Origin achieved on the second flight of the new Glenn rocket is one of those moments. Not because the world has never seen a booster return from space and land vertically, but because this marks a turning point for a company that has spent years trailing its competitors. At last, Blue Origin is now fully undeniably in the race. Yet this also casts a shadow what's groundbreaking for Blue Origin is for SpaceX just another routine. For years, aerospace engineers have repeated a simple benchmark. A rocket company isn't truly a rocket company until it reaches orbit. By that measure, Blue Origin has finally crossed the line. After decades of development, the company's heavy lift rocket New Glenn has now completed its second mission and its first full success. The booster climbed to orbit, carrying two NASA spacecraft bound for Mars, and then returned for a controlled landing. It's the first time Blue Origin has brought a new Glenn booster back intact. The achievement is significant for a company whose progress has been slow and often uncertain. Founded by Jeff Bezos in 2000, Blue Origin spent nearly a quarter century without a single orbital flight. Only in January 2025 did New Glenn lift off for the first time. That debut mission reached orbit a rare accomplishment for a first launch, but the booster was lost when three engines failed to reignite for landing. That failure raised the stakes for Flight 2. A month before the second mission, Pat Remius Blue, Origin's Vice President of Space Systems Development, made the company's intentions clear. We fully intend to recover the new Glenn first stage on this next launch, he said. Fully intend to do it. The urgency wasn't just about pride. Blue Origin has fallen behind schedule for years, and the U.S. Space Force is waiting. To compete for national security missions, Blue Origin must demonstrate reliable booster recovery and rapid reuse. A successful landing is now the key to further progress. The next New Glenn launch, planned for early next year, will reuse the same booster flown on this second mission. On top will sit Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander, a cargo spacecraft designed to aiming to become the largest spacecraft to reach the lunar surface. It's one of the vehicles NASA is counting on as it pushes toward returning astronauts to the moon. Not just a technical milestone. Inside Blue Origin, the successful second flight serves as a much-needed boost for a company that has spent years trailing its competitors. Pat Remias, the company's vice president of space systems development, understood from the beginning that landing the booster on the first mission was unlikely. And history supports that caution. SpaceX needed 20 Falcon 9 launches over five years before achieving its first successful booster landing. Another 15 months passed before a previously flown Falcon 9 returned to space. By comparison, Blue Origin has shortened that learning curve more quickly, even if the process has taken longer than the company once hoped. But the strategy behind each company is different. SpaceX's approach, fail, fast, learn fast, relies on frequent launches and rapid iteration, allowing the team to gather flight data at a remarkable pace. Blue Origin's culture is shaped by its motto, Gratitim Ferociter, step-by-step step ferociously. It favors measured progress, careful engineering, and methodical testing over speed. Careful preparation before the actual flight helped Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket land successfully after just a few flights. But while SpaceX now lands its Falcon 9 rocket multiple times a week, a pace that has become almost routine, Blue Origin is just beginning its journey to recover its boosters. Before Flight 2 managers hoped to refurbish and relaunch the first recovered New Glenn booster within 90 days. Instead, nearly a year passed. Engineers traced the previous landing failure to seven issues tied to propellant management and engine bleed control, subtle but critical details 
in the booster's complex restart sequence. All of these efforts point toward one central objective, competing directly with SpaceX. The strategy is clear. New Glenn exists to challenge the Falcon family of rockets. Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander was proposed to NASA's Artemis program to show that SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System shouldn't be the only option for returning astronauts to the lunar surface. And recently, Blue Origin received an unexpected boost. NASA Administrator Sean Duffy announced that the agency would reopen competition for the Artemis III landing system. The decision allows companies, including Blue Origin, to submit new proposals. Duffy cited delays in SpaceX's Starship development and a desire to keep the schedule for a crewed lunar landing within the current presidential term. The announcement did not go unnoticed. Elon Musk, frustrated by the reopening of the contract, delivered a blunt response on social media. Blue Origin has never delivered a useful payload to orbit, let alone the moon. It was a pointed comment and a criticism grounded in the company's history. Blue Origin was founded in 2000, two years before SpaceX. Yet the trajectories of the two companies could not be more different. SpaceX has launched Falcon rockets hundreds of times, broken multiple industry records, and helped push the United States to an unprecedented share of global orbital payload capacity. Blue Origin, by contrast, spent decades flying suborbital tourism missions on New Shepard and conducting small-scale experiments for NASA. Its list of orbital achievements remained extremely limited until very recently, even its latest success launching NASA's twin escapade spacecraft toward Mars was modest by agency standards. The entire mission cost NASA about 55 million, a relatively small figure compared to larger planetary programs. Of that, Blue Origin received $18 million for the new Glenn launch, according to federal procurement data. Although Blue Origin sets the goal to outpace SpaceX in the near-term future, given the challenges still ahead, that goal remains distant. The company's most immediate task is straightforward, but difficult build better engines, build better rockets, and fly New Glenn far more often. One of the biggest bottlenecks lies in production. Blue Origin's output of New Glenn second stages has moved faster than its ability to build first stages, the GS-1 boosters. The company's engine and booster factory in Huntsville, Alabama, took years to fully activate and even longer to reach efficient production rates. This imbalance is partly intentional. Blue Origin's strategy has been to produce only a small number of GS-1 boosters each one far more complex and more expensive than a Falcon 9 first stage. The plan relies on recovering these boosters routinely and refurbishing them quickly between missions. But this approach comes with a significant risk. If landings fail, the entire launch schedule slows down. SpaceX approached the problem differently. During the development of both Falcon 9 and Starship, the company produced hardware at a much higher rate. Multiple boosters were built in parallel, ensuring that flight progress didn't depend on a single successful landing. At one point, Blue Origin hoped to fly New Glenn eight times in a single year. In reality, the year will end with just two missions. The upper stage, GS-2, presents its own challenge. The initial version is expensive, adding considerable cost to each New Glenn flight. Jeff Bezos has outlined two competing paths to address this developing a reusable upper stage or driving the manufacturing cost of an expendable upper stage so low that reuse becomes unnecessary. According to Bezos, this isn't a decision that can be made theoretically. Blue Origin will have to build and test both approaches in the years ahead. Despite the difficulties, there are signs of progress. In September, Laura McGinnis, Blue Origin's vice president of New Glenn Mission Management, stated that the company was assembling several boosters and had eight upper stages already in storage. 
If true, it positions Blue Origin to significantly increase its launch cadence next year. But flying more often is only part of the long-term objective. Blue Origin wants to cut the cost of delivering a kilogram of cargo to orbit, or to the moon, by a factor of 100. CEO Dave Limp compares the goal to cost reductions seen in industries like automobiles and consumer electronics. Achieving that kind of progress may require full reusability across the New Glenn system a frontier Blue Origin has only begun to explore. In the end, Blue Origin's biggest challenge is cultural. The company must transition from what some insiders once described as a slow-moving Bezos-funded non-profit into a fast, disciplined, cost-conscious aerospace builder. And in recent years, that shift has quietly begun. Former employees from the era before Dave Limp became CEO often joked that Blue Origin was the world's biggest non-profit funded by one person. The point was simple. Unlike SpaceX, which had to win customers and deliver results to stay alive, Blue Origin never faced financial pressure. With Jeff Bezos footing the bill, the doors were never in danger of closing. That safety net gave the company stability, but also removed the urgency that drives innovation. For years, critics portrayed Blue Origin as old space, slow bureaucratic, and often more likely to file lawsuits than fly rockets. Much of that perception solidified under former CEO Bob Smith. By the end of his tenure, even Bezos appeared frustrated. In December 2023, Bezos appointed Dave Limp, a longtime Amazon executive, to take over as CEO. Some questioned his lack of aerospace experience, but Limp quickly established firm control. His mandate from Bezos was direct execute Blue Origin's programs and do so with urgency. Inside the company, Limp set out to narrow the focus. Priorities were clarified. Engines and New Glenn became the center of attention because nothing else could move forward without them. Over the next year, he pushed the organization to operate with greater discipline and fewer distractions. Now, with the successful second flight of New Glenn Blue Origin, has carved out a clearer path. The company's next phase is defined by two goals scaling up hardware production and driving down costs dramatically. The landing of New Glenn's booster on its second mission is more than a technical milestone. It's a signal that the company may finally be shifting into the fast-paced, cost-efficient mode required to compete at the highest level of the space industry. For the first time in a long time, Blue Origin looks like it may be on track 